So if someone refers to financial synergies in the context of mergers and acquisitions, this is different from operating synergies. Okay, so operating synergies have to do with increasing the revenue, cost reduction. Financial synergies have to do with cash flows and reducing the cost of capital for the combined firm. Okay, so let me give you a couple scenarios. In the first scenario, let's say we've got a retailer of luxury goods, so they sell high-end products, type of company that wouldn't do that well when there's a recession. And they happen to merge with Dollar General, a company that tends to do pretty well during a recession. So what will happen here is that there's not a perfect correlation between the cash flows of these two different retailers. Okay, So during a recession, cash flows of Dollar General would be doing pretty well. Cash flow of the luxury goods company wouldn't be doing so well. And then when the economy is doing really well, then you might see the reverse. Uh, some people stop shopping at Dollar General as much. They start buying more luxury goods. So because the cash flows are not perfectly correlated, kind of balance out a little bit. So this company, it, the combined firm, if we combine this firm and this firm together, the combined firm would have more stable cash flows. How does that map back into the cost of capital? Because I said financial synergies are all about reducing the cost of capital. If a company, the combined company, these two together, has more stable cash flows, then it's going to be a lower risk to who? Like, well, lenders, for example, right? So if a lender is thinking of lending to this combined firm, they say, oh, the combined firm has a lower chance of going bankrupt. I have a better chance of getting my interest payments, getting the principal repaid. And so the lender says, you know, I'm more likely to lend and I'll lend at a lower rate. Okay, so then in that case, the combined firm would actually have a lower cost of capital because of the more stable cash flows are reducing the risk of the firm. Now, the second scenario, let's say you've got two firms. So firm A, they've got lots of capital. It could be they've got a lot of cash on their balance sheet. They have the ability to borrow and get more capital, but they don't have a lot of projects with a really high net present value. So they don't have a lot of high return projects, but they've got the capital to fund projects if they were to have those great projects. Firm B is in the opposite situation where they've got a lot of growth potential. They have a lot of high return projects, but they don't have the capital to fund those projects. So in this case, if firm A and firm B were to combine, the combined firm could be better off because basically firm A would be providing capital to firm B and then firm B would be, then invest it in the high return project. So it's basically each company is lacking something. One is lacking high return projects. The other one is lacking capital. When we combine them, firm A is actually serving as a source of capital. Firm B is sourcing the capital from firm A when they are combined. And then firm A is getting basically access to these high return projects. So the combined firm could be better off.